guys, welcome back to Five Play Design. I'm Mrs. B. I'm Glenny D. This week, we are learning about design elements. What are design elements, Miss B? Well, Glenny D, they are creative elements that help us visualize, explore, and share our design thinking more clearly. They include color, lines, shading, space, and texture. We hope you enjoy this week's lesson. Do you think we got away with being imposters? Run. <laughs> They're so sneaky, those two. It's the real Miss B here now, and I'm ready to dive into this week's activities with you. Day one, we're assigning values one, two, and three to the level of shading will apply to our cubes. The shadow obviously is the darkest. You can color in according to the values or you can use lines. Sometimes designers will even use dots. When we are assigning a level one, it's receiving the most light. Level two less and level three or value three receives the darker shading because it faces away from the direct light closest to the shadow. So it helps us understand where we also have to place a shadow on our design. Now, when designers are shading, they actually refer to this process as rendering. It helps give us more information about a design. Anyway, have a great time trying these activities today and looking at the way light can reflect off a surface and how designers can communicate shade and shadows on their drawings. Now, when we are creating our shadow for our value three, it really is dependent on the angle of the light source. If our light source was at a three o'clock position instead of a one o'clock position, we would find that shadow would need to be a lot longer. Just keep in mind the triangle effect of where the light is coming from, the angle at which it hits the object, and then connects with the ground. If you'd like an extension, change the angle of the light source. Have fun and I'll see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, welcome back to day two. Well, we're going to be rendering or shading using dots. Now I mentioned dots briefly yesterday. We can use them instead of lines and one, number one, hitting the direct light source receives no dots and number two just means an even sprinkle of those dots. On the second cube, our light source has slightly changed direction, meaning number one is still receiving the most light, number two is just a sprinkle to highlight that there is some shadow, whereas number three is furthest away from the light source and it's also where you'll find the shadow. Now, do not use red for a shadow. Your design might be red, but the shadow you create is always going to be grey or black. In the second part of the activity, we are going to render using lines, a bit like yesterday. But challenge yourself one step further and create, use the lines to create a grid formation. Here we can see the same as the first activity, that the light source is coming directly down and that we have two of the same values, number two. You can always add a little bit of extra shadow around the edges and underneath the lip of your cube. You'll see it more so in this one, this cube, where we're using the grid, but again, we've got a three value, which is means that the lines are closer together, it's much heavier shading or rendering, and we're going to draw our shadow or shading a little bit heavier under the lip and down the side. Well done, everyone. See you tomorrow. Welcome back for day three of more shading or rendering. We are going to be rendering these shapes, but please remember to try and use a dark colored pencil. Dots can tie your hand out, um, and so stick clear of a yellow or a lighter color. Now, the sides that face the same direction have the same value. We can see there too is facing and threes are facing directly away from the light. Remember, the shadow always goes with your value three 
and it needs to be a grey or a black. So have a go at those ones and then we'll get started on the second activity for today. This one we're using lines or grids. Number one is always going to be the top receiving the most light source. Again, the sides, the under part of the step that are all facing the same direction get our number two. And the further side away from the light is your number three value, which means your lines are very close together. And if you're doing a grid, it means that your grid is very dense. Well done. Now, how would we apply a shadow to this shape? It's important to understand how the light angle comes down onto an object to create a shadow. It forms triangles. And here you can see that in the same direction as the arrow, as the light, we are allocating lines construction lines just lightly to show us where the shadow would land and to mark out the shape of our shadow. Now, do you prefer lines or grids? Welcome to day four. Let's jump in to looking at how we divide curved faces into three sections to apply our values one, two, and three. Essentially, we just divide the bottom line curved part of the cone that we're looking at here into three equal sections. Now you can imagine a light line going up to the vertex or draw in very lightly some construction lines there to allow you to see each part of that cone in thirds. The second value gets a light sprinkle and then the third area being value number three gets a denser sprinkle of dots and you're completing your rendering by allocating the shadow. Well done. Now, it's a little bit different when we are working with a sphere. We still divide it into thirds, but the very first point, we actually create an ellipse. This shows us the highlight that's occurring around our number one value. Now, the second line that we're going to draw in sections the um, sphere. It's almost like half of an ellipse. So it's like an arc that divides it into our value two. So number one, getting no dots. Number two, a sprinkle. And then number three, more densely packed dots. Now remember, we're applying a shadow to finish our rendering. It's also an elliptic shape uh, and it's not centered. So it sits off to one side underneath the um, sphere. So <laughs> yes, dots are lots of work. In our second exercise, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're dividing our cone into three sections. So that bottom curve line of the cone, the base, it's going to be divided there. You can put a dot, you can imagine a line going up to the vertex, or you can draw in some light construction lines. The sphere, we're going to also section into three areas. The first being our ellipse, which gets the direct light source. The second is like an arc, half an ellipse. Now our number one values are our highlights, so they're not receiving any dashes. Our number two, again, it's a light sprinkle of dashes, so not too dense. And number three, a lot heavier. Now, this is only when the light source is coming from the angle in this picture. If our light source was coming from a different direction, for instance, the other side, think about where you'd put your highlight. Remember to finish off your rendering by placing your shadow. So when I say rendering, I'm talking about the shading and the shadow. And there you go. Well done, everyone. That is day four. We'll see you for Fun Friday tomorrow.
Hi everyone, welcome to Friday Fun Challenge. I can't believe we're at the end of another week. This time we're looking at a mystery object. It's quite complex, so we've combined different objects together and we're going to use our values 1, 2 and 3 to render this object. You can make up your own story what you think this object is if you would like to. Now, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to apply your number one value. So your highlights, as you can see here. If you find that your hand tires out using dots, try lines or grids. And if you've got a lot of time, you might actually like to try some colored pencils. If you are going to use color on your rendering, please make sure that your shadow is penciled in as a gray or a black as our shadows are not colored. Here we can see that we are completing the um, spheres first and now our cone shape we are sectioning into three areas to establish those one two and three values. Keep in mind that all the value ones will be facing the same way or the value twos will be facing in the same direction. And number three is always your value on the surface that is directly facing away from the light source. You can add a little bit more detail by under the lip creating a shadow effect by using denser lines or darker shading. And then finally, our shadow. Now, the shadow for this one is a little bit complex because we have to include the tower. Again, that is when we use triangles to come down from that imaginary point where the light's hitting to the ground. It should all be on the same angle as the light source. We hope you have fun. And if you want a real challenge, please create your own mystery object and give it a go. We'll see you next week. Bye.